நமஸ்தே வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெரி வார்ம் வெல்கம் பேக் டு யூ டு யுவர் ஃபேவரட் யூடியூப் சேனல் மிதகுரு டு யூ நோ வாட் ஹேப்பன்ஸ் வென் வி கம்பேர் டு மேக்னிடியூட்ஸ் ஆஃப் த சேம் டைப் ஆஃப் குவான்டிட்டி ஹேவிங் த சேம் யூனிட்ஸ் இட் ஃபார்ம் த ஸ்பெஷல் ஃப்ராக்ஷன் தட் வீ நோ ஆஸ் அ ரேஷியோ இன் டு டேஸ் வீடியோ லெசன் ஐ மனன் மேத்யூ த மேத் ஃபேக்கல்ட்டி அட் மிதகுரு இஸ் கோயிங் டு எக்ஸ்பிளைன் டு யூ வாட் அ ரேஷியோ இஸ் த பேசிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் இட் அண்ட் ஹவு வி கேன் ஃபார்ம் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் காம்பினேஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் காம்பசிஷன்ஸ் ஆஃப் ரேஷியோஸ் த ப்ராப்பர்ட்டிஸ் ஆஃப் அ ரேஷியோ and also at the end of the video we will see the solutions of exercise 7a so please watch the video till the end apart from that subscribe to our channel midha guru and join the family today now let's begin this lesson now in a country there are two cities a and b which are 360 miles apart in city a is a young man named trevor trevor works in a business firm and he has a very good salary so he bought a beautiful blue color dodge viper but somehow trevor is not happy with its performance he feels there's a bit of more horsepower that should be coming out of the car but he can't touch it he hears about a custom shop in city b and decides that it's worthwhile to make the journey to city b get his car modified so he makes the journey this journey takes him a time of 6 hours So by the normal logic of physics that is of speed distance and time he calculates his speed to be 60 miles per hour In city B he goes to that particular custom shop and selects some parts and pays a huge amount of money to make his car almost brand new He gets a body kit he gets some engine upgrades a heavy flow air filter and his car is a lot more powerful and faster than it was before After meeting a few friends in city B Trevor decides to make the journey back Some of this time and not surprisingly as the car was more powerful it only takes him 4 hours to get back Again he calculates his speed this time to be 90 miles per hour Let us hear another story to understand ratio better In a family which has an elder brother a younger brother and a mom decide to have a pizza party one evening after ordering the pizza and waiting eagerly the pizza finally arrives they take the shares that they are going to eat and retire to the bedrooms to eat it from the comfort of the bed mom takes five slices of pizza the younger son takes two and the elder son takes three let us try and understand with numbers what ratio is through these examples let us see what this means mathematically in the first case when trevor went on the onward journey from a to b his time o was 6 hours and his speed so was 60 miles per hour and on his return journey the time t s was 4 hours and the speed ss was 90 miles per hour if i ask you to compare the time between his original journey and his return journey that is This is the comparison that we have learned about. We can say that this time was greater than the time taken for the return journey. However, there's another way to compare them. That is, write it as a fraction as TO by TS, which will be equal to 6 by 4. Or if we simplify it further, it becomes 3 by 2. Similarly, if we want to compare the speeds, we say that his original speed was 60. and his speed on the return journey was 90 we cut this off and this is equal to 2 by 3 so this shows us a comparison in the simplest form between two quantities in this case the time of his journey and in this case the speed of his journey as you see i do not write any units here because if this speed is in miles per hour this speed is in miles per hour as well and the units cancel themselves out similarly here this time is in hours and this time is in hours as well So the units cancel them out. 
this fraction that I have written as 3, three by 2 will be written as 3 with this colon and is read as 3 is to 2. That is how we read a ratio. Now this ratio is nothing but the simple, simplest form of the comparison of two quantities. Similarly, this ratio will be written as 2 is to 3. So this is the idea of ratios. Let us see for the second case just once for example. Because ratios are not always between just two quantities. They may be between 3, 4, 5, 6 or even more than that. So in the next case, the mother had five slices of pizza. The elder son had three slices. And the younger son had two slices. If we are asked to compare the number of pizzas the mother, the elder son and the younger son ate, we can write it as a ratio taking two colons that is this the mother is to the elder son is to the younger son we can write it it's 5 is to 3 is to 2. So this will be the ratio between these three quantities. I will just take one more example to explain to you. For example a question says that in a triangle, the angles are in the ratio 5 is to 3 is to 10. So we have 5, this is 3 let us say and this is 10. We are not saying that these angles are 5 degree, 3 degree and 10 degree, we are just naming them. And since as we saw that when we take out the ratio, we divide it by a common factor, the highest common factor. So let us say the highest common factor among these is x. So this angle becomes 5x, this angle becomes 3x and this angle becomes 10x. So the question is trying to tell us is that when we take out the ratio that is 5x is to 3x is to 10x, we see that x is common in all 3 and we can cancel that out and we see the ratio is still 5 is to 3 is to 10. So this is why we took a constant or a variable in this case you can say x such that its value is the highest common factor between the three angles when they were compared as a ratio. Now we know that the total angles, that is the sum of the interior angles of a triangle should be equal to 180 degrees. From this, we calculate that area in x is equal to 180 degrees. So, x is 10. Now, x is that highest common factor we were talking about. So, 5x, this angle will become 50 degree, this angle will be 30 degree and this angle will be 100 degree. This is the idea of ratios and how they function in our day-to-day -day life. Let us try and understand a bit more technically. So by its definition, ratio is a comparison between two magnitudes of the same quantity. Let us say I asked you to compare the time of the original journey, that was Trevor's journey, and the speed of the return journey. Would this comparison make any sense? We are comparing a time period to a speed. The unit of time period is hours while this is kilometers per hour. And these units don't cancel out as well as we saw in the example. So there is no sense in making such a comparison because the quantities are different. This is a time period and this is a speed. So we can only compare two magnitudes of the same quantity. For example, a weight against the weight, a height or a length against the length, a time period against the time period. A quantity without any magnet, uh, without any units, I'm so sorry, a quantity without any units. For example, the number of students as they have no units as such, it's just a number, 40 students, 50 students. So only such quantities can be compared to each other. For example, if I tell you the number of grains in 100 grams of rice against the number of students in your school, as they both are a number, that comparison still makes some sense. But if I ask you to put a comparison of the weight of the rice in your lunchbox against the number of girls in your class, that comparison would make no sense. So ratio, to stay simple, is between two magnitudes of the same quantity. Now ratio can be expressed in a few different ways. Let us take an example. You buy 5 kilos of rice in a shop and another customer buys 7. So we can express these two quantities as we saw by the definition because the quantities of the same type that is a weight kg against kg. So we can compare the magnitudes of the two quantities. In this case it's 5 by 7. This is one way of expressing a ratio that is as a fraction. 
So we can express it as 5 by 7. That is the weight of your rice and the weight of the other customer's rice. Next, we can also express it as a decimal number. And these two are not very much different from each other because this is where I'll get this decimal number from. I start dividing 5 by 7. So I know it doesn't go into 5, so we take 50, 0 0.7, 49, we get 1. And it's almost 0 0.71. This is also how a ratio can be expressed. But the most important and the most used way that a ratio is expressed in, and it is also the most meaningful way, as in looking at it in a single glance gives us a lot of information, is the standard form, that is the one we learned, 5 is to 7. This is how you'll see ratios represented in your day-to-day -day life, such as in newspapers telling about the performance of two batsmen against each other, or the performance of two companies against each other, and so on. This is how you will see ratios printed and also in milk packets, in mixture packets to tell you the ratio between the different components. So this, these are different types that we can express it in, but these two ways are generally not used, generally not seen. This is the standard and the most used way to express a given ratio. Now before we begin to mathematically operate and understand ratios, let us understand some technical important points related to them. The first one is that a ratio has no unit. As we saw the ratio between the two times taken by Trevor to go from A to B and then B to A, that was 2 is to 3, or sorry, 3 is to 2. We see that this 3 is to 2 has no unit after it as such. Even if I write it as 3 by 2, I do not write any unit after it. Because in a ratio, as I said, there are quantities of the same type against each other, the units get cancelled out. And there are no units left over to express in the ratio. Second one says the quantities in a ratio are called terms. For example, the ratio 5 is to 7. This is the first term and this is the second term. The first term is called the first term or the antecedent. It's known as the antecedent. So 5 is the antecedent of this ratio. The second term is either called generally the second term or it has a special name that is the consequent. So the first number that is 5 was the antecedent and the second number 7 is the consequent. Now if both the terms are multiplied or divided by a common non-zero number, the ratio is unchanged. If you multiply 5 is to 7 both by 0, we get 0 is to 0, both of which are equal. So that doesn't make sense. So we do not multiply or divide by 0. Instead, if we do it by any other whole number, for example, you do 5 into 2, it becomes 10 and 7 into 2 becomes 14. The ratio remains unchanged because again, we can divide those two by 2. And the ratio comes out to be the same as 5 by 7. Now the next one, is the ratio must always be expressed in the lowest form, that is the first and second term must not have any common factors. As we discussed earlier, a ratio cannot be written as 60 is to 80. We need to divide both by their highest common factor or in other words by all the common factors. So when I represent 60 is to 80, I am supposed to write it as 3 is to 4 because that is the simplest form we can express that comparison in. Now the last point says that for two quantities A and B, a is to B will be equal to B is to A if and only if A is equal to B. In no other condition will the ratio and its reciprocal ratio be the same. For example, we have 10 is to 7. There is no case that 10 is to 7 is the same as 7 is to 10. Only when both the terms A and B are equal, will they be equal, oh sorry, they will be equal when we interchange their places because both the numbers are same. And both these ratios will always be equal to 1. That is the only case in which two ratios A is to B and its reciprocal ratio B is to A will be equal. Just to be clear, a ratio can be a comparison between two magnitudes of the same quantity. And those magnitudes can be anything. It would still be a valid comparison. But sometimes when the ratio is expressed in the fractional form, we know that fractional form to also be known as the rational form because a rational number is P by so a fraction is more or less a rational number. Now, if a ratio cannot be expressed in the rational form, that is we can show it as a p by q form, but p and q are not integers, then that number won't be rational. That is the ratio will be irrational. Such quantities or such ratios are known as incommensurable quantities. The two quantities in that ratio will be incommensurable, meaning we cannot compare them against one another. However, if that ratio is a rational number from where the word rational comes, 
they will be known as commensurable quantities because we can compare them. For example, I say a comparison between the value of 10 to the power 2 and 10 to the power 4. So when we write this down, this is 100 against 10,000. We cancel these out because 100 is the common factor between them. And then we get the ratio 1 is to 100. Now when we write this as a fraction, 1 by 100, we see that this is in the form p by q where p and q are both integers and q is not 0. So these two quantities, that is 10 to the power 2 and 10 to the power 4 of whatever units they were, if they had units, they are commensurable quantities. I'm sorry, commensurable quantities. However, if we have two numbers such as root 2 and 2 compared against each other, you can write it as root 2 is to 2 and this will cancel out with root 2 because root 2 is the common factor among them. We write the fraction as 1 is to root 2 which can be written as 1 by root 2. Now since this number here is in the form of p by q but p and q are not integers, so this is an irrational number. And since this ratio is expressed in a form of an irrational number, these two quantities, whatever they are expressing or representing, they are an example of incommensurable quantities because we cannot put a comparison between them. Now there are different types of compositions of ratios. For any given ratio, A is to B, where all the conditions of the ratio are satisfied, that is A and B are both integers, whole numbers, and they do not have any common factors. The first type of co composed ratio is the duplicate ratio. Now, as I said, for any given ratio A is to B, the duplicate ratio is defined as the ratio of the squares of both the terms. So, for example, I had a ratio 2 is to 7. So, the duplicate ratio of 2 is to 7 would be 2 square is to 7 square, that is 4 is to 49. So, the duplicate ratio of 2 is to 7 is 4 is to 49. Now, the second time of composed ratio is the triplicate ratio. And from the name and the idea that duplicate was a squared ratio, it is quite clear that a triplicate will be a cube. So for any given ratio a is to b, the triplicate ratio is given as a cube is to b cube. For example, I have a ratio 2 is to 3. So the, the triplicate ratio of 2 is to 3 will be 2 cubed is to 3 cubed, which will be 4 is to 27. We see in none of these cases is the original ratio and the duplicate or the original ratio and the triplicate equal to one another. But these are different ways of composing ratios of, of a common one. Now we we'll see some more composed ratios. Again, for a ratio A is to B, where all the conditions are satisfied, that is A and B are whole numbers and they do not have any common factors. The third type of composed ratio is known as a subduplicate. Now for any given ratio A is to B, the subduplicate ratio is given by root A is to root B. For example, I had a ratio 16 is to 25. So the subduplicate ratio will be root 16 is to root 25, which will be equal to 4 is to 5. And the last type of composed ratio is the subtriplicate. Now just as subduplicate was the square root, subtriplicate of a is to b is given by the cube root of a is to the cube root of b. For example, I have a ratio 512 is to 1000. Subtriplicate ratio of 512 is to 1000 would be the cube root of 512 is to the cube root of 1000, which will be equal to 8 is to 10. These are the different types of composition of ratios based off of a given proper ratio. Now that we have understood quite a bit about ratios, 
Let's start with the solutions of the first exercise in your textbook that is exercise 7a. If you don't, if you are not able to solve any one of these questions, you can see the video as a solution. And if you feel confident that you can solve all of them or even a few of them, you can pause the video right here, start by yourself and later check the video as just a way to check your answers. If you think you are not confident to solve even one of those questions, no worries. I'm, that's why I am here. So let's begin the exercise together. So the first question is, if a is to b is 5 is to 3, find 5a minus 3b is to 5a plus 3b. For these type of questions, we need to establish a value for a and b. Let us take the highest common factor by which the numbers are divided to get to the simplest ratio 5 is to 3 to be x. So a will be 5x, b will be 3x since 5 is 5x is to 3x is always 5 is to 3. So now we have 5a minus 3b by 5a plus 3b. So 5 times of a which is 5x minus 3 times of b which is 3x. Similarly 5a times of 5x plus 3 times of 3x. We get 25x minus 9x by 25x plus 9x which will be equal to 16x by 34x we cancel out x and by 2 we get 8 by 17. And this will be your answer. Now similarly the next question says if x is to y is 4 is to 7 find the value of 3x plus 2y is to 5x plus y. Again we establish some values for the terms of the ratio. Let us say x is equal to 4m, m being the HCF of the two quantities x and y. So y will be equal to 7. We are supposed to find 3x plus 2y is to 5x plus y. So we write 3 into 4m plus 2 into 7m is to 5 is to 4m is to 7m. Sorry, this will be plus. I'm stick. Yeah. So now we have 3 into 4, which is 12m plus 14m. And here we have 15m plus 7. Oh, sorry. So now it will be 15. 5 times 4, it is 20. So we have 12 plus 14, which will be 26m. And 20 plus 7, which will be 27. Since a ratio is also a division, we can cancel out the commons. That is m here. And the ratio will be equal to 26 is to 27. So moving on to the next question. Now in the next question, it's a similar type. It says a is to b is 3 is to 8. Find the value of 4a plus 3b by 6a minus b. Again, we establish some values, taking the SCF of the two terms a and b to be x, we take that a is 3x and b is 8x. Then we substitute these values up here. So 4a plus 3b by 6a minus b. Now 4a meaning 4 into 3x plus 3 into 8x by 6 into 3x minus b which is 8x. So we have 4 into 3x which is 24x plus 3 into 8x which is also 24x. So sorry 4 into 3 which is 12x plus 24 which is 36x. Down under we have 6 times of 3 which is 18x minus 8x which will become 10x. We cancel out x. Then we divide by 2. We get 18 by 5 as the answer. Moving on to the next question. We have if a minus b is to a plus b is equal to 1 is to 11, find the ratio 5a plus 4b plus 15 is to 5a minus 4b plus 3. So first we need to find the values or at least establish some values for a and b. According to this ratio here, a minus b is 2, which can also be written as a minus b by a plus b is equal to 1 by 11. 
So we'll take 11 to this side and we'll take a plus b to this side. So we have the equation 11a minus 11b is equal to a plus b. We bring b, the b terms to this side and we bring the a terms to this side. We get 11a minus a which becomes 10a and this side this becomes plus this becomes 12b. You can divide both the terms by 2. We get 5a is equal to 6b. So bringing b to this side and taking 5 to that side we get a by b is equal to 6 by 5. Since they have no common factors we can say that the ratio between a and b is 6 is to 5. From there we will say that a is 6x and b is 5x. So now we have established values for a and b. Now we will find this ratio that is 5a plus 4b plus 15 by 5a minus 4b plus 3. So we write 5a, 5 into 6x which is 30x plus 4b, so 4 into 5 which is 20x plus 15 by, we have 5a minus 4 so we have 30x minus 20b plus 3. Now here we have 50x plus 15 divided by 10x plus 3. So here we take 5 as common. We also get 10x plus 3 and down under we also have 10x plus 3. So we cut this out and this ratio will be 5 is to 1. So from this ratio here we establish some values. First we found the ratio of A is to B. We established the values of A and B and from that we evaluated that this ratio is equal to 5 is to 1. Now moving on to the next question. Now the next question says find a number which bears the same ratio to 7, is 7 by 33 that 8 by 21 does to 4 is to 9. So first we need to find the ratio between 8 by 21 is to 4 is to 9. So we will write it as 8 by 21 is to 4 is to 4 by 9. So we know that these can also be represented as a fraction. Then we will cross multiply. twice by 7 which is 6 by 7. So now we need to find a number such that its ratio with respect to 7 is to 33 will be 6 by 7. Let us say that number is x. So x by 7 by 33 should be equal to 6 by 7. Now we will cross multiply we will get 33x by 7 is equal to 6 by 7. Cancel out the 7s on both sides since this going up here will be multiplication and both will get cancelled out anyways. So x will be equal to 6 by 33. So when we compare 6 by 33 against 7 by 33, the ratio will be equal to 6 by 7 which is the ratio between 8 by 21 and 4 by 9. So moving on to the next question. We have if m plus n by m plus 3n is equal to 2 by 3, find 2n square by 3m square plus mn. So again, first things first, we need to establish some values for m and n. For that, we'll use this comparison given here. We have m plus n by m plus 3n is equal to 2 by 3. So we multiply 3 up here and take m plus 3n up there. So we have 3m plus 3n is equal to 2m plus 6n. So we bring m to this side and take n terms to the other side. We get m is equal to 3n. We bring n this side and we get that m by n is equal to 3 by 1 or in other words m is to n 3 is to 1. From this we will take that m given that the HCF of m and n is x, m is 3x and n is x. So m is equal to 3x and n is equal to x. Now we will use all these details to find this value here. So we have 2n which is x squared by 3 
m squared plus m, oh sorry, which is 3x into n, which is x. So we have 2n squared, which is 2x squared by 3 into 3x squared, which will become 27x squared. This here will be 3x squared. So we have 2x squared by 30x squared. We strike out x squared. We also strike out 2. We get that 2n squared by 3m squared plus mn is 1 is to 15 or if you want to write it just as a fraction as it was, it is 1 by 50. So let's move on to the next question. In the next question, we are supposed to find x by y. So in this case, the ratio of x is to y when x squared plus 6y squared is equal to 5xy. So first we need to solve this quadratic equation to get a relation between x and y. We will bring this xy term to this side, we get x squared minus 5xy plus 6y square is equal to 0. Now we have learned in quadratic equation how to solve such equations. So we will solve by factorization. We will do x squared minus 2xy minus 3xy plus 6y square is equal to 0. Here we take x as common, it takes minus 2y. Then we take minus 3y as common, x minus 2y is equal to 0. So we have x minus 2y to x minus 3y equal to 0. So now we have two cases as we learned in quadratic equation they will have two roots. So in the first case x is equal to 2y because x minus 2y will be 0 and the next case x is equal to 3y. So when x is equal to 2y the ratio of x is to y is 2 is to 1. Now when x is 3y I bring y to this side, it is y, 3 by 1. So the ratio between x and y will be, in this case, it will be 2 is to 1. In the other case, it will be 3 is to 1. So let's move on to the next question. Now in the next question, we have if the ratio between 8 and 11 is the same as the ratio of 2x minus y to x plus 2y. Find the value of 7x by 9y. So again, first we need to find or establish some values for x and y compared to each other. So we, the question says that 2x minus y by x plus 2y, this ratio is the same as 8 is to 11. So now we multiply 11 up here and 8, this x plus 2y up here. So we get 22x minus 11y is equal to 8x plus 16y. So we bring y to this side and eight, the x terms to this side we get 22 minus 8 which is 14x that side we have 16 plus 11 27 y so now we bring y to this side and take 14 to the other side we have x by y is the same as 27 is to 40 so now we have the ratio between x and y now we need to find the fraction 7x by 9y in the same sense, taking x as 27, uh, let's say the constant is m, so 27m and y as 14m. So we have 7 into 27m by 9 into 14m. So 9 goes into 27 3 times, 7 goes into 14 2 times. Now many we can cancel, we have 3 by 2 or 7x to 9y is equal 3 is to 2. So from this given ratio that 2x minus y by x plus 2y is 8 by 11, we found values or established values for x and y as 27 taking the constant as m27m and 14m. Then we calculated the value of 7x is to 9y. So moving on to the next question, we have Divide rupees 1290 into a and b, c and such that a is 2 by 5 of b and b is to c is 4 by 3. First of all, it is given here that b is to c is 4 by 3. So let us say b is to c, 4 is to 3. So b is equal to 4x, c is equal to 3x. Now it says a is 2 fifth of b. Therefore, a will be equal to 2 by 5 into 4x which will be equal to 8 by 5 x. Now given that these three a that is 8 by 5 x, b which is 4 x and c which is 3 x that we calculated together should be 1290 rupees. 
rated by 5x plus 4x plus 3x which is equal to 1290. So we have 28 plus 15 which is 43x by 5 is equal to 1290. So now we got that this x that we were taking is 150 rupees. So a becomes 8 by 5 times of 150 since this is 30, this is 240 rupees. The share b is 4 times of x, so this becomes 600 rupees and c being 3x becomes 450 so 450 plus 600 which is 1050 and 240 which is 1290. So now moving on to the next question we have now read this a school has 630 students the ratio of the number of boys to the number of girls is 3 is to 2. This ratio changes to 7 is to 5 after the admission of 90 new students. Find the number of newly admitted boys. Let us say there are a few things to consider you. First, given that it has 630 students and the ratio of boys is to girls is 3 is to 2, we will first find the number of boys and number of girls originally. So let us say the boys are 3x and the girls are 2x. Now 3x plus 2x should be equal to 630. So 5x is 630 and x is equal to 1. Two, six. So the boys are 252. Oh, sorry. 3x, which will be 300 into 26, 16 into 16, 18 plus 1, 78. 378 boys and 252 girls. This was the original case. Now the new students are a total of 90. Let us say B are the number of boys. So the boys in these new 90 students are B. So the girls will be 90 minus B. I am talking about only the new 90 students. Now when we have 378 plus the new number of boys by 252 plus the new number of girls, we get a ratio that is equal to 7 by 5. And this is how we will find the number of newly admitted boys. That is, we will find the value of B. So here we have 378 plus B by 342 minus B. It is equal to 7 by 5. So you multiply 5 here and 7 here. We get 378 into 5, which will be equal to 990 plus 5b and 340.7, into 7, which will be 7428. So I bring 1890 to this side and bring 7b to this side. I have 12b since so 7b becomes plus and here we will have 4, 0 and 5. So 12 will go into this 4 and 2 times. So the number of newly admitted boys was 42. Out of the 90 of the new students that were admitted in the school, the number of boys are 42. And the number of girls for 90 minus 42 that is 48. So now moving on to the next question we have 
what quantity must be subtracted from each term of the ratio 9 by 17 to make it equal to 1 by or 1 is to 3. So, let us say this number that is sub supposed to be subtracted from both the terms is x which means that 9 minus x by 17 minus x should be equal to 1 by 3. So, what we will do? We will multiply this 3 up here. We will take 17 minus x up here. So, now we have 27 minus 3x is equal to 17 minus x. I take 3x this side and bring 17 to this side. I get 10 is equal to 3x as this becomes plus 3x minus x which is 2x. So, x will be equal to 5. Now, if you do 9 minus 5 by 17 minus 5, you get 4 by 12 which we know is equal to 1 by 3. And therefore, x is equal to 5 is our answer. If we subtract 5 from each of the term of the ratio 9 is to 17, we get a ratio that is equal to 1 by 3. So, now moving on to the next question, we have the monthly pocket money of Ravi and Sanjeev are in the ratio 5 is to 7, the expenditures in the ratio 3 is to 5. If each saves rupees 80 every month, find their monthly pocket money. So, now we have two ratios, one of their income that is the pocket money and one of their expenditures. So, first of all, for the income that is for their pocket money, let us say the constant is x which means Ravi's pocket money is 5x and Sanjeev's pocket money is 7x. Similarly, for their expenditures, let the, uh, sorry, let Ravi's expenditure, first of all let the constant be y. So, Ravi's expenditure will be 3y. Similarly, Sanjeev's expenditure will be 5y. Now, we can form two equations in x and y such that both of them are equal to 80, given that both of them save 80 rupees. Now, savings are the income, in this case the pocket money minus the expenditure. So, for Ravi, that income is 5x and the expenditure is 3 by this is equal to 80. And similarly, for Sanjeev, it is 7x minus 5y, which is also equal to 80. So, now I multiply this equation by 5 and this one by 3. So, I have 25x minus 15y is equal to 400 and 21x minus 15y which is equal to 240 and I subtract this equation. So, this gets cancelled out. We have 160 which is equal to 4x. So, x is equal to 40 rupees. So, Ravi's income or pocket money is 5 times 40 which is 200 rupees and Sanjeev income which is 7 times 40 will be 280 rupees. So, the pocket money of Ravi is 200 rupees and the pocket money of Sanjeev is 280 rupees. So, let us move on to the next question. The next question says the work done by x minus 2 men in 4x plus 1 days and the work done by 4x plus men, 1 men in 2x minus 3 days are in the ratio 3 is to 8. Find the value of x. First of all, you need to understand that if these many men are working for these many days, the total work done by them in the first case is the number of men multiplied by the number of days they worked. This by this we can give the man hours that they worked for. For example, there were 10 men and they worked for 4 days, that means they did 40 days worth of work. And the total work done in the second case would be 4x plus 1 to 2x minus 3. Now, according to the question, this ratio, that is the work done by the first group of men to the work done by the second group of men is 3 by 8. As you can see, 4x plus 1 is common in both. Strike that out. You get x minus 2 by 2x minus 3 is equal to 3 by 
8. So we cross multiply 8 here and 2x minus 3 here. We get 8x minus 16 is equal to 6x minus 9. So we bring x to this side and we take 16 to the other side. Yeah, so we have 2x is equal to 7, meaning x is equal to 7 by 2. So let's move on to the next question. Now the next question says, the bus fare between two cities is increased in the ratio 7 is to 9. Find the increase in the fare if the original fare is 245 and the increased fare is 207. So we have two cases. First of all, let us establish that the original to the increased fare 7 by 9. So the original fare let it be a 7x and the increased fare be a 9x. So basically when the question says find the increase in the fare, we need to find how much it has increased, that is the difference between 9x and 7x, that is twice of x. So first let us find the value of x. In the first case it says the original fare is 245, which means 7x is equal to 245. So x is equal to 35 rupees. Now the change or the increase in price was 7x, 9x minus 7x which is 2x. So the increase would be 70 rupees. Now in the second case it says the increased fare is 207 which is my 9x is 207. Which means x is equal to 23 rupees. Again the change or the increase in price is 2x which means 2 into 23 which will be 46 rupees. So when the original ticket fare was 245, whatever the new ticket fare was, the change in the price was 70 rupees. And similarly, when the increased fare was 207, it means it was 46 rupees higher than the original price would have been. So now, moving on to the next question, we have, by increasing the entry ticket, cost of entry ticket to fare in the ratio 10 is to 13, the number of visitors to the fare has decreased in the ratio 6 is to 5. In what ratio the total correction increased or decreased? For this you need to understand that originally, first of all from these two ratios, the ratio of the people, let us say it is 10x is to 13x, that is originally, sorry, the fare, the cost of the ticket was 10x originally and now it is 13x and let this be in y, so the number of people that used to come was 6y and now they come that they are 5y. So originally, the money that was raised would have been the cost of each ticket into the number of people appearing, which would be 6cxy. Now after the increased fare, the total money that has been raised is equal to this new fare into its number of people. That is 13 into 13x into 5y which will be 65xy. Now we need to find the ratio between the original amount of money raised and the new amount of money raised. So this is equal to 60xy by 65x. Why we strike out xy xy and by 5, 5 we get 12 is to 13. So the ratio. between the money raised originally and the money raised after the number of people and the number of money had changed or the price of the ticket had changed is 12 is to 30. Now moving on to the next question we have the question is in a basket the ratio between the number of oranges and the number of apples is 7 is to 30. If 8 oranges and 11 apples are eaten the ratio between the number of oranges and the number of apples becomes 1 is to find the original number of oranges and the original number of apples in the basket. Let us say this ratio that is 7 is to 13 is in the term of x. So oranges to apples is 
7 is to 30. Let us say the HCF of this ratio between the number of oranges and apples is x. So the oranges are 7x and the apples are 13x. Now according to the question, 8 oranges are eaten. So the new number of oranges is 7x minus 8 and 11 apples are eaten. So the new number of apples is 13x minus 11. Now when these many apples and oranges are eaten, the ratio turns to 1 by 2. So we multiply 13x minus 1 here, uh, 11 here and 2 here. We get 14x minus 16 is equal to 13x minus 11. We bring x terms to this side and take the number terms to that side. We get x is equal to 5. So originally the apples are 7 into 5 that is oranges are 35 and 13 into 5 which is 60. So these were the original numbers of apples and oranges in the basket. So moving on to the next question. In the next question we have in a mixture of 126 kg of milk and water, milk and water are in the ratio 5 is to 2. How much water must be added to the mixture to make this ratio 3 is to 2. So first of all we need to find the ratio or sorry we need to find the amount or the actual weight of water and milk in this particular mixture. For such types of question when a total is given, we do this by, let us say the ratio is 5 is to 2. So the total would be 7. For example, if there were 7 kgs of milk, as there is 5 kgs of milk and 2 kgs of water, the mixture would be 7 kgs. So now in this mixture of 126 kgs, we are supposed to find the amount of milk. So we find originally the milk is 126 into its ratio that is 5 by the total 5 by 7 that's 7 it goes 18 times 5 times 80 which is 90 kgs now water can be calculated by the minusing 90 from 126 or you can do its part of the ratio that is 2 divided by 7 into 126 which would also give us 36 kgs so these were the original weights of milk and water in the mixture now we need to add only water to make the ratio of milk to water as 3 is to 2. Let us say the added water is x kgs which means 90 by 36 plus x is equal to 3 by 2. So now this 3 gets cancelled, this gets 30, we multiply 2 here and we take 3, 36 here. We get 60 is equal to 36 plus x. So x becomes 60 and 36 becomes minus x is 24 kgs. So by mixing 24 kgs of water to this particular mixture, adding it, this becomes 60 and 90 is to 60 will be 3 is to 2. So then the ratio of milk is to water would become 3 is to 2 in the mixture. Let's move on to the next question. So for this next question, it says if a is to b is 3 is to 4 and b is to c is 6 is to 7, find a is to b is to c. First things first, a is to b is 3 is to 4. Let us say the constant is x, so a becomes 3x and b becomes 4x. From this, we can say that b is to c is 6 is to 7, meaning 4x by c is equal to 6 by 7. So I multiply 7 here and 6 this side, I get c is equal to 14 by 3 x. Now I need to find the ratio between a is to b is to c. a is to b is to c from our judgment will be 3x is to 4x is to 14 by 3 x. Now to remove this 3 that is 14 by 3 the fraction we need to remove the denominator to make it more simplified we can multiply the entire ratio that is all the terms by 3 given remembering the property that multiplying all the terms of a ratio by a common number does not change the ratio. So I multiply all the terms by 3 I get 9x is to 12x is to 14x and then I divide all of them by x because again dividing by the same number also does not change it. So it becomes 9 is to 12 is to 14. This will be the ratio between a is to b is to c. Moving on to the next part, we have find the ratio between a and c. 
from the earlier one itself, we saw that a is to b is to c is 9x is to 14x, so 9 is to 40. Or based off of this values, let us try and find the value of a is to c. So a was equal to 3x and c was equal to 14 by 3. So a is to c is equal to 3x is to 14 by 3x. So I multiply the equation by 3, I get 9x is to 14x. Then I divide by x, I get 9 is to 14. So again, the ratio between a and c is 9 is to 14. Now we move on to the next question. The next question says, if a is to b is 2 is to 5, and a is to c is 3 is to 4, find a is to b is to c. First of all, from a is to b, I say that a is, let's say, 2x and b is 5x. Now, similarly, from a is to c, we have 3 is to 4. So, 2x is to c, or we can write this as 2x by c is equal to 3 by 4. So, I multiply 4 here and bring 3 down here. I get 8x by 3 is equal to c. Now, I need to find a is to b is to c. So based on all these values, based of x, let us try and say that a is 2x, b is 5x, and c is 8x by 3. So again, to simplify this, I will multiply by 3. Because multiplying this term by 3 will give us 8 because 3 and 3 gets cancelled out. So we get 6x is to 15x is to 8x. Dividing by x, we get 6 is to 15 is to 8, which is the ratio of a is to b is to c. Now let's move on to the next question. Here it's given to us that 3a is equal to 4b is equal to 6c. Find a is to b is to c. So the idea is same like the past question but here we need to find ratios between a and b and b and c or a and c. We can do any of those. So we will take first the 3a is equal to 4b. So when we will be this side a by b becomes 4 by 3. So a is to b is 4 is to 3. So a is 4x and b is 3x. Now 3a is equal to 6c. So bringing c to this side we get a by c is equal to 6 by 3 or a by c is equal to 2 by 1. So a is equal to twice of c. Since a is 4x so 4x is equal to twice of c, so c will be equal to 2x. Now we find the ratio of a is to b is to c. As you know, a came to be 4x, b, which is 3x, and c, which is 2x. Dividing by x, we get 4 is to 3 is to 2. And that will be the answer for this particular question. Let's move on to the next one. Now here, it is given that 2a by j is equal to 3b and 4b is equal to 5c. We need to find the values of a is to c. That is, we need to find the ratio a is to c. So first things first, 2a is equal to 3b. So a is to b is equal to 3 is to 2. So let's take a as 3x and b as 2x. Now it says 4b is equal to 5c. So multiplying 4, we get 8x is equal to 5c. So c becomes 8 by 5x. Now we need to find the ratio of a is to c. a being 3x and b being 8, uh, sorry, c being 8 by 5x. We multiply both by 5, we get 15x is to 8x. And then we divide it by x, we get a is to c is the same as 15 is to Eight. That will be the ratio between A and C. Now in question number 20, we are supposed to find compound ratios. We will just keep in mind that compound ratios are formed by multiplying all the antecedents of the given ratios by the consequence of the given ratios. So the first one, sorry, uh, just a second, yeah. So we have 2 by 3, which is 2 is to 3, into 9 by 14, into 14 by 27. Cut off here 3, we cut off 14, this goes 9 times. We have 2 by 9, or which we can write as 2 is to 
9. So the compound ratio between 2 is to 3, 9 is to 14 and 14 is to 27 is 2 is to 9. Now moving on to the next one, we have 2a is to 3b, mn is to x square and x is to n. Again, writing them down as fractions, we multiply all of them to one another. So n and n gets cancelled and x cancels out x square. So we are left with 2am by 3b x. So the ratio is 2am is to 3b x. So the compound ratio between 2a is to 3b, mn is to x square and x is to n is 2am is to 3b x. And moving on to the last one, we have root 2 is to 1, 3 is to root 5, and root 20 is to 9. So we write root 2 by 1. 2 root 3 by 5, 3 by root 5 and root 20 by 9 which we can write as root 4 into root 5 by 9. So this goes 3 times, cut this off here. We have root 8 by 3 which we can also write as 2 root 2 by 3. So the ratio will be 2 root 2 is to 3. So the compound ratio between root 2 is to 1, 3 is to root 5 and root 20 is to 9 is 2 root 2 is to 3. Let's move on to the next question. Now we need to find the duplicate ratios. First one is 3 is to 4. So we will remember that for any given ratio a is to b, the duplicate ratio will be a square is to b square. So the first one 3 is to 4, the duplicate ratio will be 3 square is to 4 square which will be 9 is to 16. So the duplicate ratio of 3 is to 4 will be 9 is to 60. Next one is 3 root 3 is to 2 root 5. So again we will just take the squares to find the duplicate ratios. So we have 3 squared which is 9 into root 3 squared 3 and 2 squared which is 4 into root 5 squared 5. So 9 into 3 which is 27 is to 20. So the duplicate ratio of 3 root 3 and 2 root 5 is to 2 root 5 is 27 is to 20. Now, in question number 22, we need to find triplicate ratios. Remembering that for any given ratio a is to b, the triplicate ratio will be a cubed is to b cubed. So now we have 1 cubed is to 3 cubed, which will be equal to 1 is to 27. So the triplicate ratio of 1 is to 3 is 1 is to 27. Now we need to find the triplicate ratio of m by 2 is to n by Again, just take m by 2 cubed is to n by 3 cubed or m by 2 cubed divided by n by 3 cubed. So we get m cubed by 8 divided by n cubed by 27. So when we cross multiply, we get 27 m cubed is to 8 n cubed and this will be the triplicate ratio of m by 2 is to n by 3. Next question, we need to find subduplicate ratios. That is to remember that for any given ratio a is to b, the duplicate ratio will be, sorry, the subduplicate ratio will be root a is to root b. So in that sense, we need to calculate the root of 9 is to the root of 60 and this will be equal to 3 is to 4. So, the subduplicate ratio of 9 is to 16 will be 3 is to 4. The next one is x minus y whole to the power 4 is to x plus y whole to the power 6. So, we will remember that subduplicate ratios means we need to take out square root of whatever is our value. And then we have x plus y to the power 6. In the law of exponents, we know that when a to the power m whole to, to the root n, we need to do m divided by n. So we will get x minus y, 4 divided by 2, which is squared, and 6 divided by 2, which will become cubed. So the subduplicate ratio of x minus y whole to the power 4 is to x plus y whole to the power 6 is x minus y whole squared is to x plus y whole cubed. Let's move on to the next one. Now the next question says we need to find the sub triplicate ratios of the given ones. So we need to remember that for any ratio a is to b, the sub triplicate ratio is the cube root of a is to the cube root of b. 
So now we have 64 is to 27. So we write the cube root of 64 is to the cube root of 27. We know the cube root of 64 is 4, that of 27 is 3. So the sub triplicate ratio of 64 is to 27 would be 4 is to 3. Now moving on to the next one, we have x cubed is to 125 y cubed. So the cube root of x cubed is to the cube root of 125 y cubed. The cube root of x cubed is simple, it's x and that of 125 y cubed will be 5 y. So the sub triplicate ratio of x cubed is to 125 y cubed is x is to 5 y. Let's move on to the next question. The next question says find the reciprocal ratio of 5 is to 8. So for reciprocal ratio all you need to do is you need to change the fraction that is change it to its reciprocal. As 5 is to 8 can be expressed as 5 by 8. So it's reciprocal. Either you can do 5 by 1, 8 by 1 in that sense or you can just simply do 8 by 5. So the reciprocal ratio will be 8 is to 5. Let's move on to the next one. In the next one, we need to find the reciprocal ratio of x by 3 is to y by 7. So first of all, let's find the true ratio from this fraction. It is x by 3 by y by 7, which you can write as 7x by 3y or 7x is to 3y. Now again, for the reciprocal ratio, you need to do 1 by 7x is to 1 by 3. So 1 by 7x, 1 by 3y, multiplying them, we will get 3y by 7x. So 3y to 7x or x, yeah, it will be 3y is to 7x. This will be the reciprocal ratio of x by 3 is to y by 7. Now the next question says, if x plus 3 is to 4x plus 1 is the duplicate ratio of 3 is to 5, find the value of x. First of all, we need to find the duplicate ratio of 3 is to 5. So the duplicate ratio will be 3 squared is to 5 squared, which will be 9 is to 25. Now it says that this ratio, that is x plus 3 is to 4x plus 1, is the same as 9 is to 25. So we will write x plus 3 by 4x plus 1 is equal to 9 by 25. We multiply 25 up here and 4x plus 1 up here. We get 25x plus 75 is equal to 36x plus 9. We take 9 to this side and we take 25x to the other side. We get 66 equal to 11x. So x is equal to 6. Now we have x is equal to 6 and that will be the value of x for this given question. Let's move on to the next one. Now in the next question it says that m is to n is the duplicate ratio of m plus x is to n plus x. So we need to show that x square is equal to m n. So first let us try and solve this part of the question. It says the duplicate ratio of m plus x is to n plus x which means m plus x whole squared and n plus x whole squared which will be equal to m is to n according to the question. Yeah, this will be equal to m by n, since m is to n is the duplicate ratio, as it says. So we have n square plus x square plus 2mx by n square plus x square plus 2mn, which is equal to m by n. I multiply n here, I get nm squared plus nx squared plus 2mnx is equal to mn squared. plus m x squared plus 2 m n x. I cancel out 2 m n x on both sides and I bring the x square terms to any one side. Now I have n m squared minus m n squared is equal to m minus n. I take the common that is x squared. So now I take m n as common outside. I get m minus n which is also equal to m minus n of x squared. I cancel out m minus n and I am left with x squared being equal to m into n. So hence, based off of this information that m plus x and n plus x, the duplicate of this ratio is m is to n, we proved that x squared is equal to the product of m and n. Let's move on 
to the next question. Now the next question says if 3x minus 9 is to 5x plus 4 is the triplicate ratio of 3 is to 4, find the value of x. First of all, the triplicate ratio of 3 is to 4 will be 3 cubed is to 4 cubed, which will be 27 is to 64. This is the triplicate ratio of 3 is to 4. But according to the question, 3x minus 9 is to 5x plus 4 is also the triplicate ratio of 3 is to 4. So 3x minus 9 by 5x plus 4 must be equal to 27 by 64 off of this information. So you multiply 64 up here and 27, uh, 5x plus 4 up here. We have 64 into 3, which will be 192x minus 9 into 60, which will be 576 is equal to 27 into 5, that is 135x plus 27 into 4, which will be 80 plus 108. So I bring 576 to this side and I take the x term to this side. I get 35 minus 92 minus 35, which will be. 576 plus 8 carry one is 684. So this will be equal to 1, 2. So the value of x came out to be as 12. Based off of the information that this value of 3x minus 9 is to 5x plus 4 is 27 by 64 based off the fact that it is equal to the triplicate ratio of 3 is to 4. Now let's move on to the Next question. The next question says we need to find the compounded ratio of the reciprocal ratio of 15 is to 28, the subduplicate ratio of 36 is to 49, and the triplicate ratio of 5 is to 4. First of all, the reciprocal ratio of 15 is to 28. We can do 1 by 15 by 1 is to 1 by 28, and we'll find it to be as 28 by 15. Now, the subduplicate ratio of 36 is to 49 will be root 36 is to root 49, which we know it to be 6 is to 7. And last of all, is the triplicate ratio of 5 is to 4, will be 5 cube is to 4 cube, which is nothing but 125 is to 64. Now, I need to find the compound ratios of these three. So, it will be 28 by 15 into 6 by 7 into 125 by 64. So, now we cut this off. So the compound ratio between the reciprocal of 15 is to 28, that is 28 is to 15, the subduplicate of 36 is to 49, which is 6 is to 7, and the triplicate of 5 is to 4, which is 125 is to 64, will evaluate to 25 is to 8. Now let's move on to the next question. Now the first part of the next question says that if r square is equal to pq, show that p is to q is the duplicate ratio of p plus r is to q plus r. So first things first, let's find what the duplicate ratio of p plus r is to q plus r actually is. So you have a square plus b square plus 2ab and similarly here we have q square plus r square plus 2r q. Now it says that this r square is nothing but pq. So we write p square plus pq plus 2pr is the same as q square plus pq plus 2qr. Now we take p common from here. We get p and then p plus q plus 2r. And similarly, if you take q as common here, we get q plus p plus 2r. And as this is p plus q plus 2r on both sides, we cancel them out. And we see that it equates to p is to q. So indeed, if r square is equal to pq, that is what we substituted here. When we take out the duplicate ratio of p plus r and q plus r, that is p plus r whole square and q plus r whole square, we substitute the value of r square in places and we get that it is actually, the sub the, sorry, the duplicate ratio of p plus r and q plus r is actually equal to p is to q. So now, moving on to the second part of the question, says that if p minus x is to q minus x be the duplicate ratio of p is to q then show that 1 by p plus 1 by q is equal to 1 by x. 
Now here it says that the duplicate ratio of p is to q is p minus x is to q minus x, which means p minus x is equal to p square. Sorry. This is what the question is telling us. P minus x by q minus x is equal to p square by q square. So now we multiply these terms here, we get p q square minus x q square. And then here we get p square q minus p square x. So we bring the x terms to any one side, we bring it to either this side or this side, it does not matter. So we take, I am bringing this to this side and q x square to that side, so I get minus p square q is equal to x q square minus p square x. Here, let us take pq as common. So when I take pq as common, I get q minus p. And here, if I take x as common, I get q square minus p square. So I have pq into q minus p which is equal to x. Now since this is a square minus b square, I can write it as q plus p into q minus p. And since q minus p can be cancelled, we have x into q plus p is equal to p q. So now when I take x to that side and bring p by q to this side, I have p q by q plus p is equal to 1 by x. Or just taking the reciprocals, I get x is equal to q plus p by p q. This I can write as q by p q plus p by p q. So 1 by x will be equal to 1 by p plus 1 by q. And that is how we prove it. So now we have come to the end of this exercise. So students, that's the end of today's video lesson. But don't worry, the second part, that is proportion, is going to come out very soon. So please subscribe to our channel Midha Guru and join the family today.